my name is Chris Rush. Um, like Shane said, uh, I kind of invented this power hammer uh, quite a while ago. I started working for a uh, machinery builder that built high-speed wrapping equipment, and that was back in the 80s. So uh, right when I got out of high school, I worked for that company. And I kind of cut my teeth uh, learning everything there from um, hydraulics, electrical work, machining work, um, everything. And worked there for like 13-ish years and ended up starting sweeping floors. And when I finished, I was the head designer of the company. Um, I worked for a guy named Mark Garish. Maybe some of you guys follow him online. During that period of time, his company was m and Auto Specialists is what they were called back then. But he was making uh, 427 Cobras from nothing. Um, total build up from scratch, 427 Cobras, 289 Cobras, 250 GTO Ferraris, SWB Ferraris, and this is in a small city in uh, Wisconsin that nobody's ever heard of us, and uh, I'm just a kid in high school and I'm working for this guy uh, part time, and it's blowing my mind, he had all the cool tools, he had uh, you know Yoder power hammers, pull maxes, all this equipment, Eckhold craft formers. And like I say, as just a young kid, there was no internet, no nothing at the time, so you never seen anything like this. So I would go to, um, after work, I would go work for him. And, you know, just seeing these cars being built from nothing, it, it blew my mind. And uh, I always um, had a passion for how that was done and the metal shaping side of it. So during that time, side note, I'm, I'm building a Lamborghini Countach from scratch in my garage. So that was the car that I wanted. It, everybody wanted. Everybody had a poster of it in their garage at that time. And uh, I'm like, well, I can't afford one, so I'm going to build one. <laughs> so I was building this car, and uh, what happened was um, the car has what's called a birdcage chassis. And it's, you know, nowadays with guys that are doing trophy truck stuff, it's like no big deal. But back then, it was a pretty elaborate chassis. Uh, complete tube structure all notched and welded together. But there's a, there was a handful of tubes on that car that needed to be bent. And uh, I was a machine designer working for the other company. I'm like, well, how am I going to bend these tubes, you know? And uh, I'm like, well, I'll just design a machine to bend the tubing. So I did design the machine, bent the tubes that I needed. The car got a little bit further. And I'm like, people are like, man, this is really cool. You could probably sell these things. So I'm like, oh, maybe. So I started a company, Rush Machine and Design, and I started selling tubing benders. And there's a lot more to that, but that's basically the long and short of it. So throughout the years, I was building um, tubing benders, and the next thing that came along was a tubing notcher, of course. Then the tubing line just expanded into different machines. But I always had that metal shaping stuff in the back of my head that I was like, man, I've, I really want a power hammer, you know? And uh, I was going to do the same thing that everybody else was doing at the time, and that was uh, getting an old Yoder, uh, refurbishing it, and uh, making it my own. Well, they were hard to come by. They were very expensive. They were three-phase power. They wouldn't fit in the garage. And I just had a, you know, an, a, a four-car garage, you know, just an average door. I'm like, well, I ain't going to fit. I don't have three-phase power. So I'm like, what am I going to do? So I started um, designing and developing a machine that I could fit in my garage, but I also wanted a Pullmax machine, too. Again, it takes up space. They're expensive. They're hard to find. You've got to fix a lot of them if you do get them. So I'm, like, I'm going to combine both of these machines together in the design world. So I did. So um, I'm running the company, RMD, and uh, I'm like, you know, uh, I really want to pursue this metal shaping stuff. And I was kind of, you know, loosely not even doing it to sell it. I was doing it more for myself. Um, like most of the machines I did, it was a design out of necessity. I needed equipment, so almost every piece of equipment that I developed for my company was because either I wanted one or I needed one. So same thing with the hammer. Um, I compiled all that data together and uh, I started building the machine. Um, so I came up with what we call the MH19 and it does just that. It combines uh, both power hammer functions and pull max functions all in one machine. It'll fit in, you know, most garage doors and it plugs into, a, you know, a 210 single phase wall outlet. We did a lot of testing, a lot of, a lot of testing in the beginning. And then uh, after the machine was developed and released, you know, uh, with Shane's help too, we kind of, uh, you know, revitalized the metal shaping industry. Um, it really wasn't... Uh, a well-known thing, you know, I, you know, everybody kind of wants to do it now, and that's a big part to uh, social media, Instagram, and all that kind of stuff. Everybody can kind of see what's going on. But back in the early days, you didn't, you, 
there was no way to access any of this stuff. From there, it evolved into kind of customer requests. You know, some people wanted uh, a heavier hitting machine to do like door skins, which Bobby is going to uh, represent over there. And then we make another one to compete with a Yoder, which is a real gigantic machine that is three phase and, and you need a, you know, a kind of a factory to put it in. But it's all kind of based on the same concept. So what I can do now is kind of go through the machine in a little more detail and actually run it a little bit so everybody can kind of see um, all the benefits of what it does and what it can do. MH stands for multi-hammer, so it can do multiple functions. It can be a hammering machine or a pull max machine. Um, it's fully adjustable, which is really nice also, so you can adjust the stroke of the machine, which is how much the top ram moves, and uh, that controls um, how hard your hit is. Um, it's adjustable as far as setting your gap. That's done with this hand wheel. And it also has a rigid mode, which is this, uh, this shear pin right here. So this would go in this hole here. And this is meant to break away if you do something you're not supposed to do and the, and the two heads come together. But what I'm going to do is uh, I'll just start running the machine. So I'm going to start. Okay, so there's two ways to control how powerful a hit is. One is by stroke, two is by speed. So if I go faster, it'll hit harder. If I change the stroke to more, it'll hit harder. Or I can increase the gap a little bit and that'll also allow it to hit harder. But sometimes you don't want a hard hit. Sometimes you want a real soft hit for planishing and blending and aluminum, softer materials. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the foot pedal at a set speed and then I'm gonna increase the stroke um, and you can do this all on the fly. So as I increase the stroke, you'll be able to hear with your ears that the contact is getting heavier and heavier and heavier as the stroke increases. But I didn't change the speed, my foot was mashed on the pedal, so that was just by changing the stroke made that hit um, harder. Uh, the next function is, this is just gap control, so you can control your gap by changing this. And there's also a hand wheel right here, and this is just so you can manipulate the, the machine so you know where you're at bottom dead center. These handles are removable to get them out of the way, there's hooks here for them. This is a drop away tool, so you can pop your tools out, easy. So that's a quick change tool um, set up right there. Tool holding trays, adjustable backstop. Um, this hood scoop is a good uh, representation of what the hammer can do. And uh, we're trying to replicate this Cobra hood scoop. And we're going to make it out of aluminum. And we're going to do some power hammer work, we're going to do some beat roller work, and we're going to do some English wheel work and some hand work. This is the roadmap, and uh, you know, if you guys follow metal shaping at all online, there's a lot of different ways uh, to lay out panels and things like that. I'm a paper template uh, preference person. I like to use paper templates. So I made this one before. I mean, this is the one I made to make that. So I made the paper template off of this. Um, I had taped it on here, and I transferred all the, as much data as I could transfer from the real hood scoop onto the piece of paper. So what I did is I marked center line, I marked the center of the radius, and I showed where the edge gets tipped. And in here, this is a very gradual shrink, so it's, it's, it's kind of hard. But you can see as the paper gathers here, that's, that area needs to be shrunk. So I marked those areas on where the shrinking should take place. So what I'm going to do is transfer this to a flat sheet. And I had already uh, deburred this flat sheet. So I'm going to, and we have these blanks kind of pre-cut. So it does um, cheat a little bit and make it easier for everybody, but that's, that's good, I guess. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw some marks on here and get the centers marked. So what I'm doing is just marking, transfer, just tr basically transferring all the data from the template. 
So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the center uh, punch method, and I can explain that a little more. So what center punches do, it, as you're shaping a panel, it allows you not to lose your place because a lot of times marks will uh, get washed off and then you'll lose where you were and then it's really hard to kind of come back. So with having the uh, center punch marks on there, I can uh, kind of always lay a pepper template on it again, line the marks up and see if I'm working it in the right uh, the right position. So this is a spring-loaded uh, center punch. So you'll see that the, the punch marks get almost plant, and they could be planished out almost completely. So then I draw, just with a sharpie, I like to put the actual center line on it. All right, so so I just have a, a loosely marked shrinking area here. And I'm also transferring how far up the shrink is going. And then I'm just going to kind of freehand this, this transfer to the center. Okay, so there's the layout. That pretty much tells me what I need to do. So um, I also have written on here low crown. So what that means is um, I made this radius gauge because this panel actually does have a little bit of crown this way and it's a varying crown. So I picked, instead of having multiple gauges, I just picked one gauge that's kind of in the middle. So that's about what the crown is. So that's what we're going to try and mimic on this panel first, is I'm going to go ahead with the hammer and I'm going to try and get this much crown put into it first. And that's going to be my first step. So I'm going to put a little shape into the panel. I'm using a 24 inch die. This is a radius gauge, you'll kind of find them around the shop. So 24 is actually a little steep. 36 is a little closer. So I'm going to switch that out and I'm going to use a 36. If I go too much, I can kind of it's kind of hard to undo it. So I would rather go a little less than too much right away. So this um, aluminum that we're using is I believe it's 3003 uh, H14 aluminum. It's quite soft. So you got to be a, a little careful when you're dealing with a soft material. I only want it to crown this way. So if I go in the middle here, it's going to crown in both directions. So I'm only going to work it here and work it here, and then it's only going to crown one way. So I'm just going to put loosely where I'm going to do my work. And like I said, this is quite soft, so it's going to go pretty fast. If it was steel, you know, I, I kind of gauge, steel takes about twice the amount of time as aluminum. You can kind of just use that as a guideline. Something you can make in aluminum, take it double the amount of time in steel. So what, this is a, uh, a spray, um, nothing magic about it. It's uh, transmission fluid and uh, mineral spirits, and it's a good 
just kind of a good all around uh, lubricant when you're doing metal shaping, it works real well. So I'm gonna throw a little crown in it, check it with my radius gauge, and then I'm gonna do what's called a wash over. So I'm gonna blend all my stretching areas into everything else. All right, so here we go. Uh, So it didn't really do anything yet, so we got to make a hit harder or more speed. Okay, so you can start to see the oil, the oil canning effect. So it's starting to put that, that shape into it. So I'm gonna go over the, uh, the first one I did. So the other thing that the oil does is it gives you a, a tracking so you can see your hits. It actually, you can see each one of the hits and how I moved it. And that comes in handy too when you're trying to blend in panels and things. So yeah, I did it uh, like much, much, much faster with the 24. Okay, so now we have quite a bit put in there. Okay, so you'll see, it's hard because I gotta kinda lean on it so you can see, but we're touching almost all the way across. And a lot of this is, is a judgment call, and I think by washing that out, that it's going to blend in just right. So by washing it out, I'm gonna go over the whole thing, and you could use a 36, but that might put a little crown in it, so we have um, kind of a neutral planishing die that comes with the machine. And that's a, uh, it's called a six by one. So in the middle is a one inch diameter flat and then it blends to a six inch radius. So I use it almost exclusively for washing over if you don't want to add any more shape, but you kind of want to blend everything together. So you could use a 36, which would kind of do a two or a 48, which is kind of a, an off, um, a not standard die. But this one works real well. So we're gonna do it this way. So I can see my tracking from where I left off, just so I can continue where I left off. That's 
pretty damn close. But you'll notice that if I push down, I have crown this way, a little bit this way, but not so much. I'm just going to wash over a little more in the middle. So I just got a little belly right here that's kind of fighting me a little bit. But other than that, the rest of it's coming along. So there's a little belly in the middle. Yeah, right here. So that area needs a little more wash over. That's good. I'm happy with that for what we're doing. So that's part one. So we got a little crown put in the panel. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start shrinking. We're going to shrink right here, and that's going to gather that around. So because it's a very, very small area to shrink, um, I'm going to use the smallest ones we have, which are uh, mini, uh, mini shrink dies. So don't know if everybody knows what shrink dies are, but uh, this is a typical set of shrink dies. These are the smallest ones we have, and uh, it creates a pucker. And uh, we can get into more detail on that tomorrow on how these actually function. Uh, but it creates a pucker, a raised area in the metal, and then when you hammer it out, it increases the thickness of the metal. So by increasing the thickness of the metal, it's actually shrinking. So those are. The only two ways that you put shape into a panel are, are by making the metal thicker or thinner. So if you're making it thicker, you're shrinking. If you're making it thinner, you're stretching. And that's called shape. If you want to put form in a panel, form does not change thickness. Form is just that. Like We're going to be putting some form in that panel, and we're going to do it with that piece of tube that I have clamped to the table over there. And that's going to we're going to form um, this radius. That's just form. OK, so these dies, i got to check. I might, yeah, these dies are different thicknesses. So I do have to set my gap properly. So again, maybe a strong eighth, eighth, three sixteenths. OK, so. so Shrinking is a technique, and uh, you'll learn how to do it tomorrow. I kind of recommend just taking a test piece, and uh, you know, if you need help and instruction, we'll be here to, to show you how to do it. But there's definitely a technique to shrinking, and some people struggle with it. Some people get it right away, but there's a technique, and you need to basically feel the panel, feel what's going on. Don't let the machine take you over. You need to be in control of the panel. So I like, to, I like to hold the metal down onto the lower die instead of just letting it willy-nilly um, go in there. If you go willy-nilly, it's going to flop around and bounce on you like this, and it's going to kind of take over you. Uh, you need to control the panel. And kind of you got to muscle it a little bit. These little ones, not so much. But when you get into the bigger shrink dies, these are pretty aggressive. Um, it's, you you got to hang on. 
And uh, what you're trying to do is go in as straight as possible and come out as straight as possible. If it starts to wander sideways or whatever, that's when it's going to want to take over and try and tear the panel out of your hands. But try to go in straight, come out straight, and always try to be holding down on the bottom die when you're coming out. Okay, so I have a couple guidelines on here, and that's where I'm going to start shrinking. And I don't remember how many passes I did on that. I'm just going to kind of take it by feel. But I brought my little handy-dandy radius gauge here. And uh, well, we'll check it to you know, the actual, I think it was like 15 degrees. Uh, yeah, it's like 30 degrees. So I'm going to shrink it till we get about close to 30 degrees. And then uh, we'll see where we're at from there. I'm watching how far I'm going with the shrink. So I'm taking the pucker right up to my line. And uh, that's part of shrinking too, is you, you, you kind of have to be able to be inside of there and see it. So you got to see it taking place and see how far you're going. And uh, controlling it also is a little bit of challenge for people that are just beginning to do it. Because if you come out wide open, it'll coin this really bad. And this will turn into like razor blades out here. And I, I mean, everybody does it, you know, even when you do it a lot, uh, but you just try to minimize it as much as you can. And it happens a lot more on aluminum because it's so soft. But Okay, so that's two passes, and it's not quite there yet. And I'm not, we're not going for like supreme accuracy, we're just trying to get it close. So I'm going to do the other side and get it up two passes on this side, and we should be equal. So it's pretty close to the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one more pass on both sides. Excuse me. But this time I'm going to I'm going to pull down a little bit. So that was kind of that was basically just straight in straight out. Now when I go in I'm going to help it a little bit. I'm going to help it down a little bit. And that it kind of helps to um what do you want to say, uh, to add to the shrinking. It helps, uh, once you get a corner started, it helps to gather the metal. There you go. So that's it right there. So 
So we're equal on both sides. That's always a plus. So now I have this in the middle here. So I'm going to shrink this also and just suck that down. So see how that draw that around, and I didn't shrink all the way across. I only did just a little, a little pad there. So I am going to throw one right in the middle here, and that, it should suck everything pretty good. All right, kind of looks like a hood scoop. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we have, we might have to shrink a little more yet. Um, I'm not sure. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to start because these sides are basically just radius bends. There's really not any sh or no shape that's going to be put in the sides. So I'm going to put some form in here. And uh, there, the thing that's nice about these center punch marks is if I wipe the line away, I can re-put the line on and I know exactly where I am. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this on the English wheel with the rubber top roller. And uh, with this radius gauge I had checked. Uh, so we're, it's just smaller than a two inch radius. Okay. So we have a two inch radius die for the roller and uh, we're going to roll a two inch in there. And then uh, it's not going to be able to do it all the way but it's going to get it started. So it'll get some shape, I'm sorry, sorry some form started and then we're going to finish it off like I said earlier with that just a piece of tubing clamped to that table and that's going to help me push it around. And then what's probably going to happen is that this is going to be bulged out of here a little bit. And then I'm probably going to have to shrink in here a little bit to get rid of those bulges. So I'm, you know, uh, in the past I have uh, drew a, you know, a sharpie line on here to follow a line, and that's handy too. Um, I forgot to do it, so I'm just going to try and freehand it. So I'm going to start with zero. So basically, I just make the roller touch the rubber, and I'm going to eyeball it. So I'm pushing pretty hard here. So you see that shape, it should be going right down the center of my line. Yep, I'm just starting it. So I have to go to this side to go back. So see it, it it got it going right where I wanted it to go. And then, because, I mean, I could go a little more force, but it, it really doesn't get me anymore. So the rest of it I kind of have to do by hand. So I'm just, I'm kind of just eyeballing the center, center of the roller. So I have the gap set to zero, so I'm using a fair amount of force to, to force it into the rubber and still try and follow my line. So there we go. So it's fairly symmetrical on both sides. So now we're going to go over to that table and I'm going to push the rest of this around, but I can already see that this is going to need to be shrunk here more, but that's okay. So I'm just trying to feel so I got it on the, on the tube properly.
Okay, so so there's one thing we got. To, so that's one side, pretty close. I'll have to check it with that gauge to see if I had bent it enough. But this big pucker here, that's got to be taken out, and we'll get rid of that by shrinking it out. So all I'm doing here is just trying to find that I'm on the radius properly. You can kind of feel it when you uh, when you get it. Doesn't look too bad. So looks like just one, well, I got to tighten up a little here and a little here. So we're just gonna go back to the hammer and I'm gonna shrink that just a smidge. So I just shrunk that one little area and it's basically gone. I'll do the same here. All right, so, hey, yes? When you're shrinking, do you prefer to shrink in hammer mode or in? I shrink in hammer mode. Yeah. Why do you prefer that? So fixed draw, I mean, it, this, you're gonna get people that disagree on this, but my brain works in, in order to pound out the tuck, it has to be a hammer hit. I mean, does it have to be? No, but I feel that it works better, in my opinion that it, uh, the hammer hit pounds the tuck out better than a fixed stroke where it just comes to a position and it doesn't actually make contact with the metal. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. But again, that's personal preference and some people, you know, swear by pull max shrinking and it works, you know, I just, like I said, I prefer using the hammer hit. I think it works better if you have the choice. We can do a couple different things here. We can planish this a little bit or we can start rolling the, uh, the flange. With the work that I did on it, I lost some of my shrink got pulled away. This side is pretty good, but this side I lost some. So I'm gonna shrink on this side a little more to try and get this more equal. So all I'm shooting for here is symmetry, I'm trying to get one side to be the same as the other side. This side is right on. Feels, uh, feels much better. So, and there's a lot of hand manipulation. <laughs> you know, it's, when I first started making stuff, I used to think that, you know, when I take it out of the machine that it's like supposed to boof, like automatically fit perfect right away. And that's not the case. There's a lot of hand manipulating, pushing things around, seeing where they touch, seeing where they don't touch, seeing where it needs work and pushing it and that's kind of, that was hard for me to, um, to grasp that and to, and to say, okay, well it's not gonna come on a machine exactly right, you have to move things around and then make it right <laughs> and see where it needs work. Okay, so I think that's pretty good to, uh, to get us to roll in the flange. And when I say the flange, it's this outer guy right here. 
So what I did last time, and I probably should have spent a little more time on this, is uh, I used this, basically this height gauge uh, to give us a, you know, a set line all the way around. So what we're, you know, in order for this to come out real nice, we want it to sit perfectly flat on the table. So I might have to do a little filing to get it just right. I'm just going to shrink here a little bit. So what I did there is I just, I saw that I had a, a gap and I'm like, well, if I shrink it there, it'll suck that down and it did. So all I'm trying to do here is get it to sit flat on the table so I have a great line for marking. Let's see. Yeah, we're pretty damn close, so that's good. And I'm not saying that this is the only way that this can be done either. This is just happens to be a way that we're doing it today. So that line was in pencil, and I'm just going to darken it a little bit with a Sharpie so I have a decent line to follow. So what we're going to do is we're going to tip this in the bead roller. So basically what the tipping die does is it allows me to uh, follow that line, and I can start pulling... So what I do first is follow the line to put a light crease in the panel where it's going to fold. Then I do another pass and I start to help it up. And I can actually kind of force that edge into it. And I get it as far as I th think I'm comfortable with and then the rest is kind of hammer and dolly or we can use an air hammer to, uh, to take it the rest of the way. All right, there should be not too bad. With a little uh, little handwork, I think we'll be able to get it to lay flat. All right, so I'm gonna go back over to my table and uh, I'm just gonna hand hammer dolly it a little bit. All right.
All right, that's not too bad there. But this one I overdid a little bit. For what we're doing for today, I'm going to call that good enough. And what we're going to do next is uh, roll the front. And uh, this is at, I'm sorry, this is at a little bit of a crown. So we are going to need to pre-cut this. Seeing this edge gets rolled over, I cut off about, about a half inch here. So I cut this corner out. So this is where the center punch marks come back in handy. So I line it back up where I was. All right, so I'm gonna, just gonna file, file this edge. All right, that matches pretty good. This little form right here, and this is just kind of a, a quick uh, down and dirty hammer form to roll this front edge. And uh, that's this gonna be just hand work, hand, um, hammer and form work. So I'm going to clamp that into in that vise over there. Hot, hot damn, it actually fits. That's a plus. <laughs> I always sweat it till the last piece because it has to fit on here. So I'm just going to mark the center line on here so I make sure I'm close. And then I'm going to clamp it. Yep, that looks good. And I'm going to use about three eighths of an inch of overhang. All right. So we're clamped on, and uh, this is just hammer and hammer and form work, and uh, it gets a little tricky and because this has to be shrunk, but you're shrinking it with a hammer, and the tucks are kind of forming by themselves as you're trying to form it around that tight edge. So actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab my slapper. So this is another uh, handy tool. It doesn't work for everything, but it works for some things really well. It's a, a leather-wrapped uh, wooden slapper. But for things like this, it's so you don't put a bunch of unneeded uh, hammer marks as you're trying to get it started. So you kind of, you don't just smack it straight down, you kind of, you walk it. And it's like, uh, you don't want to try and do it all at once or it'll bite you in the ass. And then you won't be able to, there'll be two giant wrinkles there and you won't be able to get rid of them. So you, you want to try and walk it around as best you can. And it's a patience thing. You want it to go around fast, but the metal doesn't allow you to. So you, it's kind of like whack-a-mole. As you see a pucker, of, uh, you see a pucker form, you kind of go after that pucker and try and get rid of it before it gets too big. If it gets too big and you try, you try to keep going, you won't get rid of it. The straight, the straight edges is, are, are no problem. That that all goes easy. It's all in the, the the shrink part where it rolls around the corner. I'm basically doing the same thing with the hammer, not hitting it directly, but but walking the walking the hammer. So 
So there I got a, a really good size pucker, but as this rolls around, it actually needs to shrink to go around, but then it needs to stretch once I get on the backside. So the way both of these puckers are forming, it looks like I'm gonna get lucky, and they're forming right in the right spot. I need, this is where I need to be left-handed or work upside down. I got one side looking halfway decent, but that side I'm not super happy with. And I, I need a hammer with more of a radius on the, on the tip because I'm kind of just putting diggers in it right now. not my best work, but there's a hood scoop in an hour. <laughs> Thank you. But you, yeah, you'll see I, I got a lot of digger marks in here. I'm not pleased with it all, but I, I needed a hammer with a more radius on the edge, and I didn't bring one. So. <laughs> well, I didn't even get into actually... Um, why well, I needed to air hammer. I mean, this is all just rough. I didn't even air hammer it. So if you want, yeah, we can, uh, we'll go to the air hammer and we can uh, smooth that all out. We're just gonna go to the air hammer on this guy and I'm just gonna plan a show at some of the shrinking area. made that look a lot a lot nicer than uh, just rough shrunk you know so 
But uh, you get the idea of what the planisher does. I mean, it looks much, much better than it did when I was just rough shaping. What do you think? Chris Rush, everybody. Hey. Thank you, everybody.